Veliki zajec bistro bježi okolo nas do mnogo temnoga lijesa. Okolo nas do mnogo temnoga lijesa bistro bježi veliki zajec. Hello everyone, dobrodošli na moj kanal Lang Learning with Sandra. Welcome to my channel Lang Learning with Sandra. For those who are first time here, I am Sandra and I am teaching languages while I am also learning them. So, if you want to learn Korean, Croatian and or Interslavic language, the language that all Slavs can understand uh, without learning it, feel free to subscribe, to comment and to like. So, today it is time to learn about sentence structure and word order, so let's begin. In Interslavic language and also in some other Slavic languages as well the word order in the sentence is flexible. So as you know in English the position of words is not necessary to inform whether it is something a noun, adjective, a verb, object or something else. Interslavic words have their own endings and I mean uh, by that on declension and conjugations in which the complete information about their grammatical category is stored so there is no need for any word to be a specific position in the sentence uh, even if the interslavic sentence is generally arranged like subject verb object just in, in English uh, the grammatical rules allow the use of virtually any combination of a subject verb object in order to stress different components of the sentence so, if you didn't understand what I just say, I will give you a little bit later an example. So, the semantic rule is that the most important information of a sentence should be contained in its first approximate seven words. So, if you want to say something important, say it in the first seven words in Interslavic language. So, that doesn't mean that you can mix out Interslavic words in any haphazard way. So, for example, if adjectives belong to a specific noun, they must be positioned either in front of or behind that corresponding noun and other elements of the sentence cannot intervene between them. So, you just can't put noun, then verb, then adjective of that noun, it doesn't work like that. So actually, metaphorically speaking, interslavic sentence is like a branch tree and the branches representing specific sentence components, uh, mutual branches may have flexible order, but elements within each branch must not be fixed with elements from another branch. So, I hope you understand this, but if you didn't, I will explain you now just in the real example. So, but before that, uh, let me tell you about main elements of uh, words, uh, of sentences in Interslavic language. So, we have first subject part, and this is actually a noun or conjunctions of several nouns or pronouns or numerals in the nominative case. So, this is actually the part that is in nominative in the sentence and it is a subject. But you know probably that from other languages. So, it is the same. Then we have a verb part and it is made at least of one verb optionally extended by adverbs. So, you can that verb extend by another adverbs, but it is not necessarily to do that. Then we have object part and it is noun or conjunction of several nouns in the accusative case or other cases without a preposition. So this is important. It is in the accusative case or other cases, but without preposition. Then we have proverbial parts and they are made up by adverbs or nouns or pronouns or numerals in numerous cases with prepositions. So uh, any noun or pronoun or numeral at any position can be extended by extra adjectives or pronouns or numerals or attributes. And any adjective can be extended by additional adjectives or adverbs. And any adverb can be extended by additional adverbs. Okay, so this was kind of a lot of rules and a lot of uh, sentences. That doesn't maybe make sense without an example, so let me give you the first example of this, what I just told you in previously part. So we have this sentence. I will tell you first in Interslavic, then I will tell you in English, and I will tell you then each part, what means in English or and or Interslavic. Okay, so first is, 
veliki zajec bistro bježi okolo nas do mnogo temnog lijesa. It means a big hare quickly runs around us to a very dark forest. So, veliki is adjective and it means big and it is a nominative. Zajec, it is subject, it is noun, a nominative and it means hare. Then we have bistro, it is adverb and it means quickly. Then we have bježi, it is verb and it means runs. Then we have proverbial part, I told you about that, right? So now you will get it about what I was talking actually. So, okolo, it is preposition and it means around. Nas, it is pronoun, in genitive and it means us. We have again proverb, proverbals and it is do, it is preposition again and it means tu. And liesa, it is object, in genitive actually, and it means forest. And we have Temnogo, it is adjective, in genitive, and it means dark. And we have mnogo, it is adverb, and it means very. Okay, so we could change actually that previous sentence uh, like this. And it will actually again make sense because it is in the right order. It is connected in the right way. So if we say, okolo nas do mnogo temnoga lijesa, Bistro bježi veliki zajec. If we change it like that, that would mean that a big hair is not that important anymore, but it is important the information that around us it is something that is running to dark forest. So you see, if you put it in the first place, actually what you put in the first place it is actually what is the most important. So the literal translation of this in English would be around us to a very dark forest quickly runs hair but that is not the correct order in english so we can say it like that only in interslavic and some other languages where you can change orders but well but they still need to make sense just like in this example but be careful if an order even is not that important you can say that sentence like this for example you can say Okolo nas do lijesa bistro temnogo bježi mnogo veliki zajec. Okolo nas do lijesa bistro temnogo bježi mnogo veliki zajec. You can say it like that because it doesn't make sense. You can say bistro temnogo bježi mnogo veliki zajec. It doesn't make sense at all. Actually, only part that it kind of makes sense it is mnogo veliki zajec. But let me give you another second example, so maybe you will uh, get it even more. So we have Dobri student piše svojemu učitelju dolgo pismo na novom komputeru. It means a good student writes his or her teacher a long letter on a new computer. So we have here Dobri, it, it is adjective and it means good and it is innominative. Then we have student. It is subject, it is nominative, it is noun, it means student. Piše, it is verb, it means writes. Svojemu, pronoun, indative, it means his or her. Učitelju, it is object, indative, it is noun. Teacher, means teacher. Dolgo, it is adjective, it is uh, in accusative and it means long. Uh, pismo is object, in accusative and it is noun and it means letter. Then proverbial part, it is na, preposition means on, novom, adjective means new, it is indative, and computeru, object, in dative, and it means computer. So, if we will want to stress a new computer, we would say this sentence like this. Na novom computeru, dolgo pismo svojemu učitelju piše dobri student. So, you see what I did is? So I said on the new computer, long letter to his or her teacher uh, uh, writes good student. Okay, so this is all for today's lesson. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments or send me a message on any social media from the description. And also I wanted to apologize because last Friday I didn't post a new Interslavic lesson. I had a really exhausting week, so I didn't have time to make video and edit. 
and uh, if you don't know, this uh, YouTube is actually not my real job, it is just a hobby, I have a real job and I work there from Monday to Friday and well, I didn't have time to edit videos and I will definitely always tell you in the YouTube community what is going on with new lessons or sometimes just drop there to say hello so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you can get notifications when I post there something uh, see you again! I'm not sure which day because I'm also thinking about changing the day for Interslavic lesson so stay tuned for more info about that on my YouTube community or on any other social medias, mostly on Facebook page, I will post it there and on YouTube community probably, but I first post in YouTube community so feel free, so be sure to definitely hit that bell so you get notifications and well that is all for today, thank you for subscriptions, thank you for your support, thank you for your likes and thank you for understanding for uh, for the last uh, week because I didn't give you a new lessons I was uh, really grateful that you understand it and that you actually supporting me with your comments thank you so much and well that is all for today so see you again in the new Interslavic lesson Do Goodbye!